to do this. Well, just as a recap, chemical kinetics is sometimes called industrial chemistry, and it is concerned with making things happen faster because people that own factories want reactions to occur as quickly as possible and for as little money as possible. So they are concerned with rates. And we said already that to have, a, to have a reaction at all, two things got to bump into each other. Two atoms have to hit each other, and they have to hit each other at the right angle and with the right amount of energy. And the things that affect rate, and you saw these also on your state standards, are what your reactants are like. Little bitty molecules react faster than large organic molecules. Concentration. If we have two or three people running around in a gym, they probably don't bump into each other. If you put 3,000 people on a gym floor, they pretty much do bump into each other. So just simple concentration works most of the time. Temperature, because temperature is how fast molecules are moving. If you put 100 people on a gym floor and tell them to walk real slow and not bump into each other, they won't. But if you put 100 people on a gym floor, but they all got to run as fast as they can, the chances that they're going to inadvertently bump into each other increases. So this is why temperature works to help ensure that reactions happen. And finally, the use of catalysts. But we're going to look at these things in order of what costs the least, because that's the way a chemist would look at it who worked in industry. So first of all, we're going to take a look at concentration. Have we already talked about concentration? Yeah. Okay. So concentration deals with increasing collision. You make them bump into each other more often simply by putting more in there. One of the factors that affects, however, bumping into each other is whether your solution is homogeneous or heterogeneous. Homogeneous means they're all in the same phase. They're all in the same state of matter. But suppose they're not. Suppose they are in several different states of matter. For example, suppose one of your reactants is a solid and one is a gas. You can make it more sure that a reaction happens by powdering your solid. That gives you more surface area. How about a gas and a liquid? For a gas and a liquid to be assured of reacting, the gas sits on top of the liquid, right? Right. So you have to force the gas into the liquid to make the reaction happen. Where do we see that all the time? Where does that happen all the time? In the internal combustion engine. In the, in the cylinder. Don't you have a gas intake and an air intake? And you have your gasoline at the bottom of the cylinder, the air sits on top, the piston comes down. Why does it come down? To force the gas into the gasoline. I am. In the cylinder of an internal combustion engine. Oh. Oh. That's the, that's the obvious example of, of a gas and a liquid existing together, but you, make, you help ensure that the reaction happens by forcing the gas into the liquid. So you do get a reaction. Otherwise, the gas sits on top. You don't get any reaction. And a solid and a liquid. You can help ensure that the reaction happens by evaporating the liquid. So concentration helps. Not always, but most of the time. The next thing that a chemist would look at if concentration wasn't working is an increase in temperature. Temperature always works. Mm -hmm. However, do we use temperature all the time? No, that's our second.